here we have part two of the repair on the Zenith TO3000. In part one, I guess you would call it, we basically just modified so then it could take, stand by, you can see it right here, so then it can take one of these on it. Part two, we're going to be working on it from the top down. We're going to start with the antenna, and then we're going to work our way down to this, which I don't know if I can repair this. But so basically it's going to work with part two, the antennas, part three, this front part, part four, cleaning the sides and back, part five, you could say, maybe cleaning the controls along with trying to fix this attempting to this is the only part that worries me the rest of it seems like it can be done i guess like maybe i could just glue that down somehow i don't know it that part wasn't supposed to be originally like covered up by here or maybe it wasn't like done very well because there's supposed to be a door over this that you press this release button up here and then it lets this door go down and then there's a little booklet inside along with a little like dial thing right here for time zones and a little picture of like that squiggly earth thing that goes like that it probably has a name but yeah um i must say one thing that i really like about this model is this grill cloth that this metal beaded grill cloth that's drenched in cigarette doesn't smell like cigarettes but you can tell by looking at this golden colored knob that I think that this was definitely owned by a smoker at one point and they probably smoked a lot around it so I guess let's get the antenna disassembled and work on that It looks like you can just twist this off. If it will ever focus. Yeah, that can twist off, so that'll be easy to clean. Look at that engineering. So that'll be easy to clean. I noticed that if you look along here as it says zenith there's little screws flathead screws so i guess i'll be able to unscrew this part which should come apart in two parts leaving the metal rod antenna and i'm not really sure i'm assuming that wire goes up there and is just kind of connected to it but there might be some kind of thing where that odd screw is but we will see look what i've got the outer part i just uh, unscrewed that and off came this back piece with a part number of 36-182 so I haven't unscrewed this odd screw down here and I still haven't taken a look at the other side flip the radio. Wow. <laughs> That's like a CB antenna on there, like an outdoor on the car CB antenna. It has this thick tube there and then it starts to get to the parts that you will extend out. That is impressive. I guess I'll unscrew that last odd screw. And we can probably get this out and then get the other back piece off. There's the other part. The part this is Zenith. Probably won't end up scrubbing this part right here. Or if I do, it'd be very gently because I don't want to rub off the rest of the paint that's on there, which this has been carried a lot. There isn't much to rub off, but this one has a number on it of... 
That one still, it still has all the screws in it, so that's why I'm being so careful. Look at that. Looks like this has become disconnected from there. Must have just been pressing up against there because it definitely improves the signal when you extend the antenna. So that was making contact. So I'll have to solder that back down on there. Solder grind's already all heat, uh, hot, heated, hotted. It's already hotted up. So <laughs> I'll get that down. So it's tacked down reliably now. I think that I'm gonna soak this, this, and this in warm water while I scrub down the rest of this antenna. Maybe try to straighten out that top bit because I think it must have hit something or something knocked into it because it's bent at the top just a little bit. It's got maybe like a curve like that. But yeah, still be a nice thing to fix. But I don't want to try too hard because I don't want to end up snapping it by pushing too hard on it. Uh, but yeah. So I've got all of our screws from uh, this piece right here, the part that says Zenith on it. And I kind of found, I found this little thing right here that had a few parts in it, so I emptied it out, because this is kind of perfect for putting the things inside of it, and then maybe the red one could go in there, and anything else that I find that I think needs a good scrubbing can go in there. So I guess I'll put some warm water in there, a little bit of soap. And hopefully they should come out pretty clean. I'm gonna scrub this one. It's probably the dirtiest. And then not scrub this side of this one. I don't think it would come off, and it might come off a little bit, but nah, I just wanna keep it on there. Keep for the originality. I'm not gonna spray paint this red. I'm just gonna leave it the red plastic. Doesn't matter if it looks like it's from 1962, or, or it looks like how it did in 1962. I'm kind of a stickler for originality. So, spray painting over that, I wouldn't want to do. Look who just came out of the shower. And, if you notice, the bath seemed to free up. There's like a green tar in there. I almost wonder if they used copper in this paint and it rusted. And somehow the Dawn dish soap just kind of cleaned the rust out or something. But that's the part that was looking really good before. And now they're all starting to look like that. Maybe it's just a change in lighting since I have one of my floodlights on now. But yeah. I want to let this fully air out before I close it up because um, I don't want to get moisture trapped in there. I think it would be able to get out just fine, but I don't know. This red piece, let me turn that off, looks better. It still has some brown spots. Even in the lighting change, it still looks like they're all there. Everyone's populated. So that was nice. I thought that the paint had worn completely down. I didn't know that it was just using copper paint and rusted. So I'll turn that back on. <clears throat> and I guess I'll wipe that down up there. And then see if it wouldn't be too risky to try to bend that top piece back in the shape. So I'll keep you guys posted. So... I cleaned off the antenna and it's looking really nice. I have it completely detached. It's looking very nice. So, that is looking much better now. It's all back together. Now, what I have to do is take a look 
But this very dirty top part looks like they use the same paint on the wave magnet thing. That's It's dirty. So I think a damp rag with a little bit of Dawn on it should take care of that pretty nicely. But the antenna has been a success. Looks pretty good now, very shiny. Can you see my head in there? Uh, maybe. But I guess my only struggle was that right there. Got the other side pretty good. But this thing, this side just has stuff caked down on it. Also when I show it in the light, it looks like there's a bunch of crap still on the wave magnet, but... Uh, yeah, you can still see it's a little dirty without it, but... Definitely looks better. That, I'm really happy with how that came out, the word on there. Zenith. So, that should do it for the top of this. It's not perfect. Maybe I'll get around to doing that if I find some kind of chrome. Really good way to fix chrome. I don't mean Google Chrome. But, so yeah, that should do the top part and the first part of the series of getting this Zenith Transoceanic May 1962 radio back to really nice condition.